Okay, we are officially in the final stretch of analyzing this match. And this one will hopefully go faster by far than the other two combined, because we've pretty much already been seeing most of these patterns in action. This is also the more interesting one. So. So, okay, two philosophies of how to take the map point, just as always, or usual anyways, the two lanes. Left lane, right lane, the center is just the bot. So we see Timeless peeling out to take wide, Wisp taking uh, castle, or sorry, not Wisp, Citrus taking castles. Um, I was thinking of Wisp because Wisp, if I remember right, likes uh, usually always had a good setup on this map. Um, advantages are if you play out here, it's usually harder to, it's really hard to set up a flank. So it has these nice long sight lines and it's really, you know, juicy for uh, letting your Soge just free farm. But it only really has good leverage up until around here. And then it kind of falls apart and then you have to like send people around the tower as you angle and it gets kind of icky. Um, over here, if you set up around this area, it doesn't really have very good leverage over the initial bot push because you have to send someone out here and that's like not like a super great sideline. You have to split a person pretty far out to have a good angle from your tank being like up here. But as soon as the enemy team starts to push the cart this way, suddenly uh, this hold with this high ground area becomes really, really, really strong. So you kind of have these two philosophies of how they want to take the the map approach. I wouldn't say one is necessarily better than the other, especially because if both teams just sat around on these high grounds for ages, I don't think that would necessarily be more productive. But I do think that it's probably a little stronger maybe playing the high ground rather than worrying about the initial progress. Either way, it requires a lot of patience, this uh, first point. So like right away, you see this kind of default setup from Citrus. This is once again really clean. This is basically a model of how you play this setup. You have your tank playing this corner. They drop back if they're hard push. This creates an off angle between your tank and your sojourn. And they essentially have no access points onto your sojourn. Super easy to stay connected to your Kiri. And then your tracer just marks this angle so that uh, Zeb can't really get pushed. But Zeb can't really push up at all because Lethal doesn't have any good angle to update to here from. Like his best option would be like a really aggressive slide this way. And that, or like just even just walking up and like neither of those are very appealing. Same case with Tap. Yeah, he can, you know, mark Rocket here, but blinking in here suddenly puts him like triple blink away from his back line and makes it really, really committed. And it opens him up on like massive sight lines. So he doesn't really want to push further than like right around here. Does he have Rose skin? Uh, that's good taste. What, what skin does Rocket use? Contenders. Eh, that's okay. <laughs> Tap bits the marking. That was really close from Zeb. I'm curious if he messed up his cooldowns. He probably should have fortified there, but. It's a little greedy for him to not, but you know, it's kind of whatever. Because it does mean that he has it for here, so fair enough. Top is marking rocket. Very nice. Lethal is basically free farming here. This, okay, so this is brilliant from Sianjun, and I like absolutely adore this play. Because remember how we talked about like the one main issue here with this hold is that you can't actually deal with the sojourn very well. And, um,. I was actually saw when I saw Timeless versus Defiant. I was actually really impressed by how Timeless played this map versus Defiant. I thought it was probably one of their best looking maps versus the Defiant, and um, which I also did a review for on my channel. And they only like lost by a hair's breadth against uh, Toronto. It's so, like here, check this out. So he's going for the free firing, and he's holding super close here to make sure that he's LOSing the Sojourn. And note that as soon as uh, he has, I don't know what exactly the call was, but you have Rocket in aggressive on top, Riker in aggressive on Zeb. 
openers doing who knows what, probably looking to hit the dive with Sianjun. But Sianjun actually hops up on the outside of lethal here and hits the the duel. And this is just like insanely good. And I kind of wish Riker wasn't like, you know, heading out at the same time and Rocket wasn't like heading out at the same time because that makes things really awkward for Sianjun because now they can all afford to focus him a lot more. But he does manage to get the pick and then get sheltered by his team and not long, like long enough to to make this work. And without the Sojourn, this hold is so much less robust. And really, Wisp should just crash into Cart and probably reset here. Or sorry, Citrus should crash into Cart and reset here. Tap this down, neutral, and Zeb and those guys head out. Fair enough. So the way that you would classically see a team set up for this section is um, hit scan up top like right about here. Um, Lucio kind of marking the access point here, which is personally what I like, or like sitting up here, depending on if you're playing against, like if you're against like a, a dive tank, you'd especially have your Lucio just stack down your surge to make sure you can boop that. Um, sometimes you would have your tank like here or and like your Kiri here, or you can set up your tank here and your Kiri kind of back here. And usually you just have your tracer on cart. Sometimes you'd only ever put your tracer in here if you're planning on pushing in through here, but I don't usually recommend that because it's a really high risk play. It's usually better to just keep cart leverage and just kind of slowly drag it along. It's like I, I really dislike this rush. There's no backboard, so to speak, that would keep a uh, citrus from just kiting it out. Like they could just kite this back really easily and it's even better that they sidestep it this way because then they're actually not quite as far out of the fight and being zoned out. So like the fact that they hit this rotation is really clean and really Wisp has... Or, <laughs> dude, I am fumbling so badly here. Um, Timeless has gotten nothing out of... Uh, Timeless has gotten nothing out of this rush. Unless they really just wanted these guys to rotate this way, but like, it's just kind of awkward, especially because you look at Sianjun, and like, as far as these guys are aware, they are like full pursuing this. And I would really rather, honestly, if Sianjun had just hit a slide from like here up to here again, or like this way back up. And just like went take like take this back bro because like i know that these guys don't have access to it but and honestly same case from citrus i would rather if citrus literally just hit the long rotate all the way back up here like i think this position is so strong not like all of them but like if you sent if you had your recent soge or your recent curie and Tracer stay down here and just add your Soj Lucio rotate up here. I think that would be worth it if you see that their Arisa is dropped. Yeah, so similar case with the rush from from Citrus. Like they rush this. It's pretty fair because it splits off opener, but like. It's not great though, because once again, they don't actually have like any angles to keep these guys from just kiting it back and uh, leaving. Like imagine if tap had been up here, this would have been a lot more dangerous because then opener would have like a lot higher of a chance of getting picked here. I don't know if that would have been necessarily better because tap was pretty critical to marking rocket down low, but. This ends now. Lethal dies, that's kind of awkward like this is why I don't like this lower down area it's because this choke is so just like unpleasant to break and like lethal is stuck frontlining here well no he's not even stuck frontlining I don't know why he's frontlining instead of just letting Zeb push up ahead maybe he's just let the moment get ahead of him this ends now. but that's really this is a good OC from Sionjin because um, if you look at this,
while these guys are like these guys are they're in they're committed and uh, lethal especially is up too far what Seonjun should be doing here though is now sliding up to here and just looking to get the finish here because even if Jacob boops him I mean honestly tap and friends like they can't really afford to look at him because Riker uh and CJ should just and opener should just be able to like run over Zeb if that happens um maybe he's fine just playing from main that's probably I guess the safer choice I think if he had slid up at some point though during this he would have been able to get uh a, a kill on Jacob Either way, though, this ends up pretty nasty. Okay, so he does slide up eventually, just like really on the late side. Um, either way, though, this has ended up really nasty because note how Rocket blinks out wide this way to get this off angle on Zeb at the same time as Riker is pushing him and this at the same time Seonjin has gone for the hop up here. And now this is essentially unwinnable for Citrus. Like th There's nowhere that Zeb can go where he's going to be able to escape that pressure and that's when he just crumples. Think about like if you have a can, like an empty uh, soda pop can, and you're like spraying it with water, um, it's just going to get pushed around by the water until it's being pushed from so many different sides by the water. And like, or like if you put it like in a hole and then spray a bunch of water, and then it's just going to crumple, you know, if there's enough pressure. And that's, you know, they're just the, the tin can getting crushed here by all the pressure coming in from the different sides that they can't escape. That's pressure in Overwatch operates on a principle of like fluid dynamics fundamentally. Okay, so this is nice from Seonjun and CJ. I actually like this. This is really cute. So you have Riker playing in from main. Um, I would have probably liked if CJ is just like a little bit more directly helping Riker. Like if CJ was here, I think that would actually probably be stronger. Um, because Opener and Seonjun already have this covered. Seonjun can honestly kind of just play this here an opener can just hit the boot marking because honestly Riker can literally just pull back and opener can get a or push up in either direction opener can get a beat pretty easily from here and then rocket is on a good angle for this as well but um I do want to note that he shouldn't really be pushing out from here unless there's a concerted push of pressure from Seonjun and Riker and that's not happening right now uh Seonjun shouldn't even have Oh, he does have rail. Okay, but yeah, he's still too early though, Rocket, because Seonjin isn't like at a point yet where he can, you know, use it. Um, so Rocket should just get forced out here, and Rocket should like it's good for him to be like marking this zone. He's just a little too early for it. It's so, like he's already you know half HP and getting checked a bit, and I like that. Uh. No, Jacob's looking for like a boop or something. But yeah, Rocket has had his recall force way earlier than I'd like. This is nice from Lethal. He just unfortunately misses the jump. And this is a good beat from Opener. Really nice, actually. And But I like... I kind of wonder if it would have been better to just be like hugging this wall to land the boop on him in case he actually did land the jump. Then going for the beat. Because like Riker is like basically fine and Riker is also doing weird things like going underneath right now um, so he's not actually even going to get the beat I don't think so I, I think I would have rather maybe just have the Lucio like literally like in here hanging out or whatever to land the boop I don't think he would get killed by OC before he could boop the OC out the window um, maybe I'm tripping though it was a good thought from lethal but like access on this is really hard so, but he is right that he needs to clear it. I think it maybe would have been better to slide up to here and pop OC here and just go for the ranged one. But that's obviously more difficult to, to land the shots. Zeb is going to get melted here. Um, they have to beat, but like neutral and Jacob and lethal are all so far back. I mean, while Zeb is so far up, Rocket is kind of a non-factor, or Jun is kind of a non-factor at the moment. So it's kind of like both the Reese's right now are positioned way too aggro. Yeah, and Riker just is getting like left out to die here. Well, 
like what happens with Rocket Man? He still doesn't have recall. Yeah, and he just he just goes like he he's just his recalls keep getting forced on like early stupid stuff and mistimings with his Orisa's pressure aggro. And then it leads to him just not having it for when he wants to do aggro later, but he doesn't want to compromise on not doing the aggro, which is the correct, you know, the more correct thing than just doing nothing at all. Um, but yeah, he just gets punished for trying to like do something there when he just didn't have the materials to do so. I don't love Sianjun and Opener just kiting back like this though, because I just don't think they can really afford to. Like that was a nice rail, but like I, I don't know why he wouldn't rather just hold this. Because if Riker and friends are kiting back, I think I would rather have the Sojourn. Oh wait, Lethal already had his jump up. Okay, never mind. That was I guess that was Sojourn. Sojourn's cooldown is shorter than I remembered, and Sojourn has better instincts on that than I do. Because yeah, he can't duel that I guess with the beat up. Okay, well, so he goes. He does go back up for it though, as soon as the beat is over. So that was really nice from Sianjin and opener to to clear that out again. But unfortunately, there's not much you can do about it. What about CJ? Mm. Yeah, it's kind of whatever. This ends now. Yeah, I mean, fundamental error is Rocket just made himself a vulnerability and then tap isn't marked at this point. And also, I think that beat from opener, I think, was just flawed. And now they're not able to match this beat later. <sighs> That's still a really good push there from Timeless. Rocket shouldn't bother. Bad rush. I guess it, well, no, let me rescind that. It's okay. Because it clears this high ground, and that high ground is really clearly valuable positioning. Um, but it's not like something that's going to lead to kills. But not every old house, so. That was a pretty good kite back from uh, Citrus. <sighs> Rocket Greeds, I think, onto Lethal, if I remember right. Yeah. So if you look at this, we cleared this high ground. Our setup should be Soj up here, Lucio here, or Risa can drop if they want, or they can stay up here. Um, Tracer could be on cart probably, and Curie stays wherever the Risa is to have LOS. So I think here, we probably pretty reasonably could have had Sianjun and Lucio pursuing lethal for the kill and then had rocket just pushing cart and then Riker kind of playing up here with Kiri before maybe dropping and that might be the play to the way to go or just have Riker and cart and like rocket going down here to farm Zeb as Riker comes around this way, and that that would be pretty strong too. And then you could have uh, Kiri down here. That that would probably be the strongest setup. But so we do have the the, the rocket on cart. Like that. I don't know, man. I just I'm not feeling it. I look at this 
And to me, the most natural course of action is to double blink into here to at least kind of gather your thoughts and backboard on Lethal's escape. Rather than like pursuing these people who are like really like notoriously slippery, I would rather just update my angle and like chill. Or I would double back to cart here. Like once you've cleared this high ground, double back to cart because that's like your duty, you know? And then clear out tap. And then look to clear out uh, lethal with a double blink to here to cut him off. If he slides out, you just leave him and uh, keep pressing cart. Or you wrap this way and potentially consider dropping here or like looking for lethal again later. But, like we do this weird triple blinky recally pulse bomby thing, and then don't notice that tap is stealing the cart. And then we stack on our Soj, who's already clearing their Soj, like she should. And then want this so badly that we're like blinking into the the Soj E and have zero blinks, no recall, like fighting for our life here, and then get pinched. Like that's just, it's not it, man. And meanwhile, that, this is nice from Jacob. This is really clever from him to come in from this side to pinch. That was really smart from him. Finishes off Sianjin and uh, Rocket. And that's why I kind of wanted Sianjin coming in from here. So he couldn't really just like get cut around and surrounded. Because remember, we want to stay on the outside edge of the map. Riker ends up pushing up too far up too. Like this just gets, it just gets kind of scattered. And then we end up having to send opener to, you know, mark tap on the bot. And that's fine. But, uh. I think I favor top in that matchup. Hmm. Yeah, so now we get to see how uh, Citrus sets this up. So note, they have top marking the low ground. Uh, the lethal, lethal Ice got speared off, right? No, he just drops. It's kind of it's, it's okay to drop. It's just I don't love it. I would rather he just like play this cover a little closer. Um, tap is fine and chilling. That ah, rush is pointless. That dude, this is terrible actually from Citrus. Yeah, no, that that was just really really bad. They cash out all of their advantage to like run into Timeless's space. It's only natural that they're not going to be able to lock down any kills. And the OC from Stone Jin was pretty nice. This ends now. This is a pointless OC. I guess they just really want the checkpoint. So I guess if you consider that a point, that's definitely a point. So this falls into the same category as that CJ rush earlier. Sure, clears out space. So. But it won't lead to kills once again, which is fine, but you know, you have to understand that it's not going to lead to like a fight win exactly, rather just a fight delayment. Um, they snag the bot and push it up. Now this is where things always get really ugly with these bridges. And why these bridges are so strong isn't because it's like, yeah, it's like really long sight lines and really difficult to move. But this corner, you can just anchor your tank here. And it basically becomes impossible for anyone to get an angle on them. Short of like double blinking tracer into here and then wrapping. Or, of course, the more common thing is teams will play up from here while having someone come in from main, or they'll send their full team up while having someone come out this way um, and flip the map. But the, that comes with the dangers of not maintaining bot control. So now this is actually really tough for Timeless to break, but they have rush, so they can probably just drop that and be fine. And this is a good rush because they can pursue it, and it does get them that critical positioning. Um, they don't have quite like an angle like as much as I'd like, but they're at least like, you know, in the face of the other team. So it's pretty unlikely that uh, Citrus can kite this unscathed. My guess is they probably pick off Lucio. 
yeah. That was really that looked like a good stick though. Let the guide you. So I would have rather though, I think maybe instead of having a rocket worry about that, I think I would rather just have him work on tab here. And like just make sure that you know he's a non factor. I guess it's like kinda whatever, but That was cool and all, but like there's a pretty real chance he could have just died there, man. And I don't know. I'll give him benefit of the doubt. It was probably worth it. But that was definitely a high risk, high reward. I saw the vision on that one compared to like some of these kind of weird um forces that he did. But that one was like really just down the down the nose. And uh, a, definitely a half court three pointer, but you know maybe that was like a you know. I don't think there's an easier way to go for a pulse bomb of similar value there. I think that was like really really valuable. And I like that he then ends up doubling back with Sionjin to kind of mark tap here. Oh, so we used. Two ults versus one and lost that. Where does it all go wrong? The map control does count for like about one ult of value. So we should be expecting Citrus to use less ults here no matter what, pretty much. Um I think Sandrine is a little pre uh premature with the slide. I think you should probably just be walking this way and playing this slow. Um, yeah, because he kind of has to drop immediately anyways. And like even just stacking on Riker to just run over Zeb. Rocket gets the pulse. Opener is like Sleeping on the job. They hit the beat. Sanjin is out of range of the beat. So Timeless Dumpin. Four ults against zero at the moment. And they get the two kills, but then how do they lose this? CJ and Riker disconnect. He reconnects. Does Riker just like feed his brains out? Okay, so here's the fundamental issue here. Right now, Timeless has already cleared out the bot and dislodged it from this position. So I think the fact that after this point, I think instead of pursuing here, it actually would have been better for them to just continue kiting backwards with the bot and pulling it instead of using their rush to pursue kills. 
because at that point you've already like from this point on they've actually already negated uh citrus's setup so much in terms of ability to pursue by killing the lucio um in terms of like their angles mean nothing compared to a team that's like already rotated out this way i think that would be so much i think that, like they're in a comfy position here but then opener has just been doing nothing until going to help mark tap i guess maybe he's looking for like a boof on lethal which maybe he could have gotten from here and i guess that would have been pretty valuable but the problem is Riker here so we hit the beat good solid beat but Sianjun is completely out of the fight so this is effectively a 4v3 or sorry a 4v4 um tap dies though and then once again here we have an opportunity where we could have just backed out this way and this fight is irreparable for these guys like they're actually just in dire straits because lethal's uh, the neutral would be trapped behind enemy lines while tap and jacob come back from spawn in like ages so as long as you don't like feed here you're basically fine but the problem is riker is like kill hungry and looking for like damage and chasing lethal when he could have just like he, he needed to just chill because opener, Sianjin, and Rocket are all just chilling. Like, these guys are not in the fight. So now this is effectively turned into a 2v2, or even a 3v2 momentarily, because Zeb is turning this way and shooting at these two from this side. And in the fishbowl, as in these guys are all looking in at Riker and CJ when they're, like, stuck in the middle. So Riker is overextended into the middle of the fight rather than minding the edges, which would have been either this edge or this edge and like playing those to, to control them more you know gradually uh, has pulled cj in there as well and then half of most of his team is just entirely not engaged in this fight so basically Riker and cj just you know get crunched because they're taking too much damage that they can't effectively measure and zeb is chilling and uh now Jacob's back, and that's correct. I think that's a fair use of their result to make sure that they locked down the kill and got to the checkpoint. Now this is also a really hard checkpoint to break. They're gonna need lethal to slide up into that room probably at some point. Now the problem though is that um, they don't actually have to necessarily break this because um, Timeless didn't actually get it that far on the previous side and that means Riker has to touch this constantly and that's like just a Herculean task because that means he's going to be constantly exposed to damage. I would almost recommend that he just plays on the cart so that he can like spin around it to try and LOS the Soge instead of like trying to play from here. I don't know. It's probably fine but Sianjin needs to be looking for an angle up here. Should be building rail here for like a good amount of time and then jumping up here with rail and looking for the headshot on neutral or lethal. That's like really the only option. And Rocket should be the one down uh, down here marking top on the low ground. He doesn't have time for a full rotation up here. Not when it's so critical that we hold this space specifically, which means we need to hold this space. This angle is great for if you're like updating to be able to control this whole zone but if you're talking about just controlling this space uh yeah we want this but i don't think it, i think it's a luxury that we can't have i think we needed him rotating underneath to just make sure that we can keep this locked out all right so Riker does play on the bot so that's smart from him but yeah sanjun and opener are just like Chilling, and I don't think Opener can actually afford to play with Sianjun right now. I think he has to be up here to be getting as much heals on Riker as humanly possible. But especially because they have the beat disadvantage, and just like a net ult disadvantage because that terrible ult fight. Uh, this is pretty much just impossible for Timeless to win. Nice cleanup pulls from top. A nice cleanup from Zeb as well. 
and lethal. This ends now. Kind of a weird OC, kind of a weird beat. I'm not a big fan of either of those. Rush is good though. This is nice from Rocket. It's a deep cut, but it makes sense. Zeb is way too exposed. He has to back up, yep. This is a pretty good lock. I like this marking of tap. Uh, like, I like that tap is over here, marking, rather. I think we're going to see some rocket oddities again. Because, like, I don't know why he would blink that way instead of blinking out this way. To make sure that he, like, has these tools and has access to this many. To me, being able to control this and like have this angle on tap and Jacob seems way stronger than going to here. I mean, yeah, I guess he survives tap better there, maybe. Or like, sir, he, he LOS is a uh, Zeb. But. Because then the weird thing is he blinks right back to here to poke a Zeb. And I'm like, well, you know, you probably could have saved yourself a little grief if you just did that from the start. And then he once again tries to go back to the team, and that's just not like an option most of the time. I like this recontest from Citrus. This is pretty decent. I think Zeb is engaging a little too early here, but it's fine because he wants to draw a lot of attention. Lethal's playing up aggro, he has a nice pick on Rocket. Once again, what happens to Rocket? Like, Yeah, like... That's kind of just unfortunate, but to a degree, I look at this, and I wonder why blink to the left here instead of to the right. Because to me, if you we chill here for just a second, then we can blink back in and have like way stronger attentional weight on the enemy team than dropping here. And that by the same note, we're farming Zeb. And I think maybe he just misses the blink, but I think if we had just landed a clean blink in here, this would be so much stronger for farming Zeb. Maybe he just missed it and then panicked. But like a blink in here and then a blink out here, even if you needed, especially if you could get to here, that'd be ideal. That would probably have felt a lot, you know, more chill. And then, yeah, he just, I think the, bl the blink placement is all over the place. And now at this point, this is just unwinnable because check out tap. Tap can just like roll up to the the back line. I guess he has to recall force right away, so it's kind of whatever. But um, Riker and Opener are super deep. They get disconnected from CJ. Riker is eating uh, damage. This ends now. And now he's surrounded by Zeb on one side and Surge on the other, and that's just, it's over. Jeez, that was a killer shot. Oh, he just finished uh, what Zeb had already started. That was a good idea from Seonjun, but the problem is he was just too early on it, I think. How did he even get up here? It's 30 seconds remaining. 
I think he should have probably just stayed patient here instead of dropping. Or looked for a slide. Like, ideally, I would have liked for him to look for a slide into here. And then just played like from this window, maybe. I don't know. Maybe that'd feel like really low energy. Or like drop here and then tuck into here. Something that makes him like have a little more cover to work with and a little more play. Um, and what happens with Rocket? Ideally, though, Sanjun would have just reset. Yeah, right here. I would have rather if he just inted into the team or like off the map or like something, maybe. It's chilling, but once again, tap just has the better marking on the, the angle. See, he's so ready to mark Sionjin too, and then he hits the blink to stay on the outside here. Yeah, that's like, look how he tucks into the staircase there, that's just really nice. Okay, so... Throughout that, um... <laughs> Level 420, nice. Let's, uh... Give me one second. Pulling up the ep good old epic pen here. And I'm just gonna... Load back into the VOD for a second. And stare up at the sky to give myself a blank canvas. Okay. So here's pause that, switch to display capture, and control Z. Okay, so timeless. So we had um, coming in from Arisa. We had some weird anchoring positions that felt more oriented around um, kills rather than uh, objective sometimes, or like too focused on damage rather than a clean objective, and also relative positioning to the tracer, which kind of lumps into tracer. Rocket didn't feel like he clearly knew where he wanted to be in proportion to his Arisa and kind of just got dragged around the map. Um, decis so he needed to like decisively control I'll just say decisively space, but basically he needed to just decisively, re like more decisively recognize what spaces for the clear, like the clearly valuable off angles for pressuring the enemy tank or the uh, marking the enemy tracer, because that was something that top was pretty consistently outdoing him in, even though rocket was probably better mechanically tap was absolutely phenomenal throughout this series at um, finding those angles and having a good sense for them and playing safe for survival there and like constantly had rockets number on being able to mark and like keep him contained so i thought that was really nicely played by top and really lacking by uh by rocket and also um because he was indecisive with what space he was holding and like what mattered he was constantly chasing kills um And this led to him having less control over the objective, and more importantly, he was just wasting his blinks and recall constantly, and it really hamstrung his ability to take aggro plays later in the fight. Opener, or yeah, sorry, I should say Lucio. <laughs> I go a whole lot. Not don't like do this man dirty like that. I didn't think there was too much wrong there, but also I think. I, 
I think he maybe could have done a better job on like a lot of those like small detail things. Um, especially in terms of like maybe being more proactive with Chopper or Sionjun and going for those aggressive angles because I felt like sometimes they just ended up a little too more, much stacked on the Risa more than I would like when they had a lot of power positions available to them. Um, so I'll just kind of say Misk here. Um, and I think the beats were kind of wonky sometimes too, but I don't want to claim too much. That, that They're kind of like fine-ish. Um, the Sojourns, I honestly didn't have much issue with Chopper or Sionjun. I thought they were pretty consistently looking at least decent on their decision making. I would I would say maybe like the timing of with rail, because I feel like I didn't see as much as I would have liked of like having rail like perfectly ready for that pressure spike, and I think that's like super super underrated, especially with Arisa's javelin and CC for setting up plays. It's okay though. Like, it's fine. I would say both of them played very reasonably well. And it's hard to know if, like, maybe it's just because Timeless, you know, obviously is playing for their Soge. Um, but I feel like they mostly were fine. They mostly looked for good angles. It just didn't always feel like they were quite in sync in terms of the, that pressure output, in terms of, like, either the rails or uh, positioning or, like, small things like that. And then lastly, Kiri. Um, Kiri, I think, did pretty all right, but could have just done better on uh, maintaining connection to to Riker. But like, it, it was mostly fine. Like, I was mostly happy with what CJ and oh, of course, uh, cover during rush and that's about it so now i was pretty happy with how citrus played on the whole i thought both teams played these maps pretty well which is why i thought it would be fun to talk about and uh yeah hopefully you enjoyed getting to hear some miscellaneous thoughts on the matchup and uh i wish you the best Once I can figure out to stop my epic time.